Here's what we're talking about today on Daily Blast Live. The Surgeon General says social media is causing a teen mental health crisis in America. How serious is it? And what are parents supposed to do? Multi-billionaire Jeff Bezos is engaged to Lauren Sanchez, her giant ring and their yacht trip with her ex. Actor Sean William Scott will be joining us live today. And the author of a book that's being banned around the country will also be here live. Why don't some people want you to read it? Oh <laughs> my gosh. Get real. No. No. Nope. Just stop. This is a <laughs> sham. It's finally here. Drum roll. Welcome to DBL. Okay, so the Surgeon General is out with a serious warning for parents and grandparents. He issued a public advisory saying social media is a major driving force in the teen mental health crisis. Take a look. We see rates of depression and anxiety and suicide and loneliness going up among young people. And I'm concerned that social media is an important driver of that youth mental health crisis. Uh, this is the defining public health issue of our time, youth mental health. So how big of a problem is this? Well, 95% of teens use social media. Nearly two thirds of teenagers report using social media every day. One third report using social media almost constantly. And on average, teens spend three and a half hours a day on these apps. So how does that time on social media actually affect teens? Teenagers who use social media for three hours a day face double the risk of experiencing mental health issues, including depression and anxiety. So here's our question. What are parents or grandparents, caretakers, supposed to do to keep kids safe and healthy? You have three kids. A lot of them are in the teen years. What two did you of, do? Two of the three, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. what did you do to instill like safety social media habits? Are you still thinking about that? No, I mean, we didn't have time to think. It, it just was and we saw it coming. We had conversations and we were realistic not idealistic about how we were going to approach this the idea of saying hey you're a 16 year old uh, girl in 2023 no social media for you it's like okay I think telling kids they can't do something is a is you're pushing them towards it the approach that we took and I think that it's worked as far as we know you can never completely know is to just instill in her the confidence that when she is exposed to certain things, whether it's social media, whether it's face-to-face -face bullying, whether it's advertising for something that's not good for her, or advertising for something that is good, being able to discern what is good, what is positive, and what is being put, what is in front of me right now. And a lot, I think a lot of times when you look at social media, we talk about depression and anxiety, I think we could alleviate a lot of this as the older generation by getting to the root of what that is. It, we, we try and stop smoking, but people smoke because they have depression and anxiety. People do drugs because they have depression and anxiety. And these kids that are having their schools shot up all the time and are having fentanyl and all these things introduced to their world, they have the same thing. So let's figure out the root cause of maybe why these kids are retreating to social media rather than reaching out to adults or people in their social network. You have such an open line of communication with your kids. Yes. I mean, that really does make a big difference. I talk difference. to them like my friends. Mm -hmm. I, I really do. You I don't. Them. I, 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 I stop that. I try to be that son, you know, and it, it just, they, they go away, Erica. You have to be, like, you know, I was talking to Elijah for an hour and a half on Sunday about all the guys at El Segundo High School. I know who's dating who. I told y'all, I get y'all the tea. But <laughs> when you talk to them like that, the they, they're, they're more open to talk to you about right. real things rather than school's fine. Teachers are fine. But you have to you use terms more. like the goss. The goss. Right, right, right. Yes. <laughs> you sound real hip and cool. I got all Jeff, the as a parent hot goss. of two little ones, right. right? So you're maybe 10 years out or whatever that may be. What are your thoughts? Are you going to let them use social? I mean, I think it's inevitable. You use a great example because inevitable. they're, they're, they're going to be on there, it's like right? TV. And you just have to teach them right from wrong. You, uh, that's what I'm trying to instill in them now. You know, it sounds classic and cliche, but hey, it doesn't make you feel good when someone makes fun of you, right? Don't make fun of other people. Don't be nice to everybody. Buddy. Lawson brings home these little bus tickets for like helping kids. It makes me cry and I love it. You know what I mean? Because it's something that, yeah, I know. Listen, he's a little jerk sometimes too. <laughs> but uh, but I, just, I mean, it, so what we're saying is working, right? He's a good kid and so is my other kid. He's just younger, he's four. But this to me is something personal, right? Because I went through this. Since we started this show, I said there's a problem with social media because I went through it personally. 
99% of 16 year old women, listen, I think it's 99% of the country has a problem with social media because it doesn't make them feel good. And people who don't feel good lash out to other people and misery loves company. If people don't know, I was on a show Big Brother 14 years ago now, but I went through my little 15 minutes of fame. I got my big head and I wasn't just in my little bubble of friends, right? It was the whole nation watched it. Then all of a sudden that started changing. I started getting people's hate messages and you did this wrong, you did that. I'm like, you don't know me and it made me feel bad. I had depression. I I usually don't struggle with things like that, but I did, and I still do, and I'm 44 years old. I learn now not to look at those messages, but there's things I think social media can do, owners of the companies, to prevent certain things, right? It's a slippery slope when you're talking about freedom of speech, because I'm on that side. But China, and I'm not gonna get into the whole thing with, uh, did I say that a little choppy? Yeah, you I did. said a little China. choppy? I watch too many Instagram videos. <laughs> but uh, uh, China has this thing where they regulate it to a certain amount of hours, so if I could take my son's phone in the future and say, you get two hours, three hours, one hour, and then also alter his algorithm yep. to positive things. That's what they do in China. They, they alter the algorithm so it's all positivity. It's all about schooling, math. So if Science, he's suffering- technology. In, right. right. If he's suffering in one of those things, I could up his algorithm in math. I could up his, uh, if he's feeling depressed, really cool. up it in positivity. So you're not censoring what you're seeing, you're just- Curating. Curating. So this way, it's still the freedom of speech, but you're altering as a parent, just like I do on his little Amazon uh, tablet. Tablet. That's exactly what I do there. This way, you're not letting control as a social media company. You're just altering it. I, th Woo! I think you and Jordan are going to be, it's going to be an interesting thing to see because you guys have had so much right. success on social media in terms of like numbers and stuff like that, that you talking to your kids is going to sound a lot different than most True. people yeah. speaking to their kids because you've already seen it. both sides of it. So there's more of an expertise in it. Although I know no child thinks that their parent is yeah, I was going to say <laughs> cool. Jeff, This could be a really good platform for you because this is something that you strongly believe in. Uh, here in Colorado, kids, their number one cause of death, aside from firearms, is death by fire and by suicide. Mm -hmm. And depression is sky high. And they really do link it to many factors, but mostly social media right. and the obsession and the addiction of it all. Tori, you've always kind of taken the other side, saying this is a slippery slope. I'm on Jeff's side here, but please speak that side. I've always been against regulating social media due to the fact that I respect children and they have constitutional rights, including the First Amendment, and should be allowed to be on there as long as they want. Recently, we have just seen the entire state of Montana ban TikTok. So talk about regulation. A state is actually taking that kind of uh, pre... pre they're, they're... Take your time. No, they're, they're not. They're, not pre they're preventative. That's what I was trying to say. They're trying to prevent things from happening. I, at this point, seeing the amount of suicide and also being a 41-year-old that gets real envious about my own social media, I can't imagine what a 13-year-old, 15-year-old is going through when I'm like, oh man, she's got more followers. Oh look, right. she looks thinner than me. Oh look, she looks or happier than me. Comments. Over and over and over. I and was, the comments. I, we did a, Jeff and I had a healthy debate yesterday and we posted it on our social media and uh, I got a lot of negative feedback. That's okay. That's what our show's about. Sure. It's the insults. Yeah, it's the hatred. And, you know, teenagers, they get a lot of insults. Right. Enough on the playground. Can you imagine what they're seeing on social media? Yeah. So, no. if, to your point, Jeff, 42-year-old Sam, I was in a bad mood all evening because I felt so crappy sure. from some of the insults out there. I can't imagine what That's what they want, though, because they're I not know. happy with themselves, right. so they they're project it onto it. you. True, right. But yeah. I don't want that on my kids. Absolutely. I we gotta for, do something. Yeah. I am for regulation, just very careful with a scalpel, not a baseball bat. Okay. All right, coming up on DBL, have you had to pay a fine for your suitcase being too heavy? Two travelers came up with a creative idea to try to avoid the fee. And Sean William Scott will be joining us Live to talk about his new movie and his role as the villain. Hey, DBL Nation. Today, actor Sean William Scott will be joining us live, and the author of a book that's being banned around the country will also be here live. Why don't some people want you to read it? That's today only on DBL. Without thinking, how long ago was 20 years ago? What date? Uh, 2003. 2003. <laughs> no, you're thinking. You had to say, when were the 80s? Oh. That's more of like a, because yeah, then. I, you're right. Okay. When was, how long ago was 83? 
you, you almost yeah. skip your math, almost right. skips like the, the 90s. 90s. So for me, 10 years ago, it's always the 90s. That's all I was going to say. Yeah. It's always the 90s. Sorry, Sam, go ahead. Um, Sorry, I was just saying, ahead. every 10, yeah. year, 10 years ago to me is always 1990, and it's not. It is so not. Do you, were you, a, when were you born? Do you want to guess? 1994. 2000. 89. No, older. What? No, she's younger. She's 89. like she's like 98, 9, 99. 98. <gasps> 98? <gasps> see, see the math? You're in graduated high school? <laughs> the year I got hired at ET. Yeah, that's cool. Wow. You know, I, I, you. as I'm looking at like what Taylor has on, I'm so happy because I have a 16-year-old daughter and fashion is 20 years. So my so daughter my daughter yeah. dresses like TLC. Uh, and so it's like lots of big clothes. Big baggy jeans. I'm like, yes, yes, yes. On. Okay, so what we're talking about, guys, Taylor's got such a 90s look. So let's start oh, with the show the breasts. There's somebody hair clips, and then they we took go lips. to Remember they Mom, have that somebody somebody thrifted breast yes. store. High waisted Mom jeans. Mom jeans. And then the converse that you don't care with the gap here. That's the thing, the crop pants. And just a little top. Thank you so much, Taylor. So that's what I'm aiming at. Um, my problem is my mom jeans make me look like an unattractive mom. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's a little oh, yeah. Anywho, I love the, mom jeans. the mom jeans are the best. But I have read a New York Times article said that sweatpants ever since the COVID or pandemic have not gone away. Athleisure is here to stay because it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable. Welcome back to DBL. How much do you hate getting to the airport only to find your suitcase or carry-on is too heavy? Mm. Well, two young women in Australia didn't want to pay the fee, so they came up with a very creative solution, sort of. The girls started unpacking their bags and put 13 pounds of clothes on, layering shirts and jackets one over the other. One of the girls even put her iPad in her pants. Here's the final look. Sadly, their plan failed. The airline wouldn't let them board wearing all of that, so they ended up paying the $40 fee. I think of you, Jeff. Is this something Jeff would have done? <laughs> <laughs> Applause from me. Stick it to the man. I would have put up a bigger fight and make you better let me on that airplane. Mm. Yeah. I'm cold. <laughs> Something. Yeah, I have some sort of depression because of this. And yeah, you better let me on. These are my emotional support. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, How early were they for that flight? Because that's a lot of time. Uh, Erica and I remember us running through the airport in Vegas. We wouldn't have had that time. No. No, we wouldn't. No, we would not have. We would have been <laughs> Okay. On a related note. Jeray got that. <laughs> We've talked a lot on this show about people's questionable behavior on planes, and today we've got another one to share. A Reddit user posted this image of a woman on a three-hour flight painting her nails. They said four people complained of the strong fumes, and a flight attendant asked her to stop, which apparently she did not. So what do we think of this? Is it okay to give yourself a manicure in a plane? And if you were on this flight, would you have complained? I, I don't mind the fumes, mm -hmm. but if I'm getting a clipping, to the side of the head, there's a problem. Right. What would you I, say? Bing. What would I say? Yeah. I don't know. You Bing. might. I'm be like, where's the parachute? Because I'm gonna Jeff, throw you, you off. Don't mind the fumes. See, I'm not. It, I it, agree the with that. The fumes are bad. Is bad, but yeah. just would you rather in get general? It? Food is is equally as bad. I think that food is a very underrated uh, attack on the other passengers because a roast beef sandwich or whatever kind of thing, even though as good as it tastes. It smells up the whole plane. We're in a cylinder here. I really think anything that's going to make a smell. You rather have a food, like a sandwich, than a, <laughs> Sam. a, a clipping? I, no, Sam. I told you, I've sat next to somebody that clipped their nails before. I sat, and then famously, I sat next to the guy that was testing his, uh, his ringtones out next to me as Sam is doing her nails. <laughs> But think about it, a, I think it's terrible. Yeah, I think it's terrible. You smell those fumes, right? I smell it right now. Yeah, that was my scientific experiment it's, to show the viewers. That's really, though. do you smell it, Erica? It's, yep. it's off-putting. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and that's, imagine that's you're in good. a tin can, you can't get out, and a flight attendant has said to you, stop. The second you say no to her, that should be it. Federally charged with going against a federal agent. I agree. Wow, I, I, I agree. No. It is a good point. <laughs> you can't have people saying no. I'm we would have a funny story. No. Tori brought a federal agent into <laughs> right. it. And I'm mad. I just painted over my gel nails. Oh, yes. Now I have oh, to I'm smell so it. Sorry. Well, 
it was all in the name of science. That's so. true. Okay. Thank you, Erica. Yeah. Coming up on DBL, our interview with Sean William Scott. He's back. Yes. Yeah. 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 Jeff's little cutie. We'll be talking to him about his new movie next. <laughs> he likes it. <laughs> continues to inch closer to hitting the debt ceiling and running out of money to pay the bills Congress already approved. If that happens, several Verify viewers wanted to know, will members of Congress still receive their paychecks? Let's verify. Our sources are the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities, the Bipartisan Policy Center, and testimony by then Treasury Secretary Jack Lew. A default will happen if Congress fails to raise the debt limit, an event that has no precedent in American history. Failing to raise the limit would mean the Treasury could no longer borrow money and would only be able to pay bills with whatever cash it has on hand. The coffers won't stay entirely empty. Revenue, like taxes, will continue to come in. But that revenue will only be enough to cover some of the bills, not all of them. So, which bills get paid? No one knows. Here's why. First, there is no legal framework or historical precedent that allows the Treasury to pick which bills to pay. They're all due when they're due. In theory, the legal issue could be addressed if Congress passed a new law telling Treasury which bills to prioritize. Such laws have been proposed in the past. And two representatives just proposed a bill to specifically require the Treasury not pay members of Congress if we default. But those laws could be impossible to implement. Here's what then Treasury Secretary Jack Lew told the Senate Finance Committee in 2013 during a previous debate over the debt ceiling. We write roughly 80 million checks a month. The systems are automated to pay because for 224 years, the policy of Congress and every president has been we pay our bills. You cannot go into those systems and easily make them pay some things and not other things. They weren't designed that way because it was never the policy of this government to be in the position that we would have to be in if we couldn't pay all our bills. So will Congress be paid in the event of a default? The answer is inconclusive. With your Verify, I'm Casey Decker. Welcome back. Our next guest is best known as Stifler from American Pie, but now he is channeling his darker side in the new action horror movie, The Wrath of Becky. Ooh, Becky. Sean yes. Williams Scott joins us live. Welcome back to the Hey. How are you guys? We're doing great. Sean, Sean I got to pay you a little compliment before we get going. We love having you here, but our producer who did the pre-interviews and stuff said you were her, her favorite Aww. guest she's ever interviewed, which proves you're a real cutie in yeah. real life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so sweet, man. Thank you. I gotta say something real quick. I actually sat um, next to—I don't know why I'm talking so loud. So <laughs> uh, I sat next to somebody on a plane who was uh, clipping their toenails. Oh no! And it was so bad you could tell they got like special toenail clippers oh. <gasps> with like thick toenails for and extra pressure. Ew. Yes. Mm. What was your so reaction? What was Anyways. your reaction? I threw up in my mouth. <laughs> Like a few times. It was awesome. I'm still haunted by it. We got to get you in here to tell the full toenail story. Yeah. No, let's, all right, let's get to it, Sean. More than that. <laughs> Sean, before we get to your new movie, we want to take a look back at the start of your career because the first time you were on TV was for a commercial, okay? And I think we have a little clip right. here, so let's take a look. You just move in? Yeah. Nice shot. I was all conference back home. Hey, you thirsty? Sure. Hey, Mom, this is... Uh, Ali, hi. How you doing? Want some soda, OJ, purple stuff, Sunny D? Sunny D's great. <sighs> I just threw up in my mouth again. <laughs> Honestly, that was my best performance. How sad is that? It was good. That's pretty good. Does yeah. that bring back some positive memories? Um... Kind of not, because I remember like the first day, I think we shot it in like two days, I remember the director saying to me, because I was so excited to actually like get a job, and he goes, hey, we're happy to have you here. Um, we just want to let you know that you're going to throw up today, because <laughs> you drink so much Sunny Delight. So, yeah, anyways, have a great time. I was like, um, but I didn't throw up. Oh, good. Way to go. That's the good, good. news. That's yep. the good news. And your athlete roles didn't stop there. You also played a football player in an Aerosmith music wow. video. Wow. There you see. do you remember this oh. one? Oh, oh very yeah, cute. I remember that. You know what? Um, 
Again, oh. that was my second best performance of all time. Second best. Second. <laughs> it was all downhill from there. I, I think the scouts will be worried about your accuracy on that one. Yeah. 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 That would be yeah. a question mark for the draft. Oh, yeah. man. I like that you peaked yeah. at Sunny D. That's yeah. my favorite thing ever. All right. Let's talk about yeah. your new movie, The Wrath of Becky. It is an action horror movie. Kevin James, Joel McHale, they're actually in the first Becky movie, but I think of these guys and you as funny guys. Why are they perfect for this type of movie? I mean, I don't I mean, they're just they're just great actors. Yeah. I don't know, I can't speak for myself, but I you know, loving films that I think that you know, you you're used to watching movies with the same sort of dramatic actors and and then when you have somebody you don't really get to see in, in that type of genre um a, you know a comedy guy and and when it works i think it just ends up being a little bit more satisfying yeah. but I, hopefully people think the same thing about you know wrath of becky i think the movie is awesome i did my whole focus on the movie was just you know try not to ruin it very good yeah. job good plan that's what yeah that's on my vision board every morning before i come to work don't ruin this <laughs> <laughs> now, let, let's get into this, because Becky is a 16-year-old that goes to extreme, you know, measures to get to get her dog back, basically. <laughs> and I have to ask you, yeah. as a father of a 16-year-old, did this make you scared of teenage girls? Because you should be. <laughs> 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 well, Lulu Wilson, who plays Becky, um, is just like a phenomenal person, and, um, and she just crushes it in this movie. So I don't feel like I got, like, the right example of... Um, 16 year old uh, teenagers because she's just pretty wonderful. But um, but I have heard that they're typically very scary. Yes. <laughs> they will ruin you. We are. So, <laughs> the Wrath of Becky is not the first horror movie that you've been in. You were actually in the first Final Destination movie. So how did yeah. you and your family react to seeing you die <laughs> in that movie? Oh, because no. it was uh, a quite traumatic decapitation. Yeah, weren't you decapitated yeah. by the train? <laughs> yeah, I got my head cut off, yeah, uh, <laughs> which was fun. Um, but I didn't, you know, this is like the beginning of my career, and I didn't tell my family about what the premise was. And my oldest brother, um, he went, you know, saw it in Minnesota, you know, in the theater, and he had no idea that my character gets his head cut off. And so when it happened, here he told my mom he freaked out he threw his popcorn everywhere he ran up the aisle apparently went into the bathroom started throwing up and like really had a hard time with it which is Aww. odd because obviously it's a movie and so he called my mom he's like mom is sean okay is he okay oh my god and then when my mom told me this i thought well, what a i intentionally didn't return his calls for like six months just to kind of torture him. <laughs> I love it. I That's can't. very okay, We have about 30 seconds left, but we have to ask you about American Pie because it's been almost 24 years okay. since we were introduced to Stifler. What would Stifler Why? be doing in 2023? Do? Tell us. I think I think Stifler would be a stripper. <laughs> I think that he'd be working at a pretty like crappy uh, strip club. Um, his uh, his stage name would be Inferno. Yeah. He'd be dressed up as a, a fireman. Probably his body's a little soft. He let himself go a little bit, uh -huh. and uh, and uh, but he's still trying out his you know sexy moves. Yeah. Oh, but Sean, you it, like it. it would be off Broadway, Thunder Down on. But you forget, yeah. Sean, that women like we, women like dad bod. We like a squi the squishy bod. Don't even get me into squishy this conversation. Bots. That's not true. Yes, would you rather is. have Sean or would you rather have this? Oh Sean. my God. <laughs> Sean, Sean. Hey, Jeff, you're a cutie. Come on, oh, buddy. That makes me feel better. All right. Sean, thank you we'll so much for joining us today. To our viewers, you can watch The Wrath of Becky only in theaters so May cool. 26th. Congrats, that Sean. Great. Always great to see you. Yeah. We'll be right back. Come in studio, man. Thank you so much. Take care. Thanks. At Chef Tim Ma's place. Food is typically someone else's first introduction into someone else's culture. Right? A taste that sticks with you. We use it very openly and proudly. The not-so-secret ingredient in his Chinese cooking. Something that adds to the dish. MSG, a food additive that some say is best when left out. When my parents and my uncle and family had restaurants, MSG had such a bad rap. MSG is short for monosodium glutamate. How did this three-letter abbreviation become a four-letter word? And is MSG actually harmful? We checked with these sources to verify. To be clear, MSG is a chemical, but so is everything else we eat. 
carbohydrate is a chemical, protein is a chemical, our body is a chemical. Much like your taste buds register sweetness from sugars, the sensation of umami or savory comes from glutamic acid. Brothy, salty, a little bitter, sweet. Dr. Kakumi Akeda first discovered that umami factor could be isolated from glutamic acid in seaweed and used as a standalone ingredient more than 100 years ago, and it became popular in Asian recipes. It's a way of uh, getting it in a more stable form that can be used uh, easier in food. And today, a dash of MSG is still used to help other flavors taste better. And these hit the receptors on your tongue and enhance the, your tongue's perception of that savory flavor. Just as Americans were learning to love Chinese restaurants, the letters MSG became infamous thanks to one letter to the editor of the New England Journal of Medicine in 1968. The author claimed Chinese food made him feel sick and merely theorized that his so-called Chinese restaurant syndrome could be because of MSG. It was a sample size of one who went and then said, I was feeling kind of nauseous and I have stomach ache and I'm sweaty and I'm not feeling so well after I ate at Chinese restaurant. And I tell my students, most people feel this way when they go to Chinese restaurant because they eat too much, because Chinese food is so tasty. Science has debunked the anti-Asian concept of Chinese restaurant syndrome and the idea that MSG is inherently harmful. Not only is MSG added to plenty of foods that aren't exclusively Chinese. MSG occurs naturally in a lot of food, chicken, beef, mushroom, tomato, breast milk. The FDA explains the glutamic acid of MSG is chemically the same as the glutamic acid found naturally in food proteins, and our bodies process them the same way. This has been studied extensively, and while an individual might have a particular sensitivity to MSG, like people can be sensitive to other ingredients. They can never prove that MSG had an impact when consumed at the levels that would normally be eaten by people. We can verify MSG caught a bad reputation in the 60s thanks to one speculative diner. And there's no scientific evidence it's harmful for most people. Access has really opened up everybody's palate and minds to a bunch of different cuisines, a bunch of different ingredients. And for cooks uh, like Chef Ma, good. that's something worth savoring. We're cooking for different generations now. With your Verify, I'm Abby Larico. Welcome back to DBL. We love sharing your comments. A lot of people loving this cute relationship between bromance between you and Sean William Scott. I love, I'm a big fan. I'm just a big fan of good people. I feel like you two would be besties. Dude. I think we would too. He's got great stories. You when know you what? When you get him in studio, I'm feeling a little jealousy. Oh. Al, you know you're my number oh. one buddy. It's like when you watch it, you're like, but well, what about us? Oh. <laughs> two-man crew. That's yes. right. Yeah, we gotta bring you it back on the us, You can watch the second <laughs> half of the show crew. online. Watch on YouTube, dailyblastlive.com <laughs> or our app. But if you get the second half of the show where you are, here is what's ahead. Billionaire Jeff Bezos is getting married. We're talking about the luxurious engagement ring that was seen on his yacht and our interview with the author of a book that's being banned around the country. Why do some people not want you to read it? The U.S. military reports that the average age of its service members is 30. Ads on social media suggest the armed forces are now recruiting from the nation's older population. So can seniors join the military as the ads imply? Let's verify. Our sources are the Department of Defense, the National Defense Authorization Act, and AARP. The Department of Defense tells us they aren't running any ads on social media calling on seniors for military service. Congress sets age limits to enlist in active duty. U.S. law states you can be no younger than 17 and no older than 42. So high school seniors can join, but the law does not allow a senior citizen to enlist in the active military. At one time, the maximum age was 35, but the National Defense Authorization Act that passed in 2006 increased the age to 42 to help with military recruitment. 
According to its website, the Army can lift some age restrictions depending on need. AERP's website features several seniors who switched careers following the September 11th attacks. I had been trained by the Army. I was always considered myself a soldier. Colonel Frederick Lowe left the Army in 1987 only to join the U.S. Army Medical Corps Reserves at the age of 58 and was deployed as a surgeon to Afghanistan. There are civilian jobs in the military. The Department of Defense tells us there are no age restrictions when it comes to those positions. So we can verify that, no, in general, seniors can't join the active military. Any opportunities for the country's older population related to the military would be civilian jobs. Are you skeptical of headlines and what you see on social media? We are too. The Verify newsletter answers your questions, clarifies what's true and false, and even includes a daily fun fact. Go to verifythis.com slash email to check it out. This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Oh my gosh. Get real. No. No. Nope. Just stop. This is a <laughs> sham. It's finally here. Drum roll. Welcome to DBL. It looks like Amazon founder Jeff Bezos is engaged. Jeff was spotted on his $500 million yacht sailing around the Mediterranean with his fiance Lauren Sanchez, who is wearing a huge diamond ring. Here's a closer look. Yeah, the diamond is believed to be around 20 carats, according to page six. I didn't they know she had a hand in that picture. <laughs> <laughs> They were also with Lauren's ex, former NFL player Tony Ooh. Gonzalez, okay, along with his wife, who is best friends with Lauren. No word on a prenup yet. Jeff is worth nearly $140 billion, according to Forbes. He and his first wife, Mackenzie Scott, divorced in 2019. After 25 years, she received $38 billion because there is no prenup in place. Tori, will there be a prenup? Do you think this marriage will last? What are you thinking? I definitely think there's a prenup. I, if you, there's a very famous picture, and I'm sorry I didn't have our producers create or look it up, but he's sitting in a black and white photo, and it's, he's sitting at a desk, and there's a banner, and it's just written in pen, Amazon.com, and he's just like a bunch of phones. I mean, it was just no one knew it would blow up. So when he and Mackenzie exited their relationship, that's a 50-50 California split, and she got almost 40 billion and she has spent such good she has done such good with it including 50 million to help farmers learn to see it or buy glasses for them so i will say this what? he's he, she spent 15 million the farmers glasses to program? find glasses for farmers <laughs> Where, where's that the will, other, where's will, the other excuse me in billion. south asia and sub-saharan africa that will result in a billion dollars more food because yeah. they can see and be picking and cropping and reaping all of that extra food thanks to you her. feel bad now you feel Al? terrible i, I want to fact check that oh go ahead like uh, i just salad. looked at it today Go ahead, anybody yeah. other than Al. Thank you for that. Absolutely. Anecdote. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. So for this, I'm pretty <laughs> sure there's going to be an ironclad prenup for both of them. For both of them. So I guess you, could no more you could just said that last part as your answer. I think the other part gave, <laughs> gave a lot of flavor and character to this story. How do you guys feel about hanging the with Amazon the exes? Person? <laughs> oh, good like question. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> listened, but no, say I, again. I, I was going to say, how do you feel about hanging with the exes? Ooh. Erica, are you cool with that? Yeah, I don't have an issue with, I mean, you know, obviously they have kids together. Um, um, they haven't been together in quite some time. I do think, and I'm curious for the guys, if your ex, mm. who you share a child or children with, was dating a billionaire mm -hmm. and invited you onto their yacht, courtesy of her new fiance, would you go? If my kids were grown, maybe, but not when they're young like this. Why? Because they can't see, once you walk on that Are boat, they're like, your 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 dad oh, your dad junior no that's big dad that it's it look you i know think it's it, too spoilish it's not even spoilish it oh. look there is a power dynamic in everything and once you get on that boat and it, you see that your dad is just like everybody else on that boat and this man that's not with your with your ex woman is now telling your dad like oh don't sit there that's really expensive lamb fur or whatever like the not fact that well, whatever fancy rich wool, people stuff have wool. but yeah i guess it is. <laughs> It seems, it seems silly, but Jeff, uh, maybe this is just a, a dumb man thing, but I don't want to see, I don't want my young kids to see me be subjugated like that. The, I'm I, sorry. It's I, I like to have fun with this, but in a yeah. serious way, I kind of I agree can't. with you. I can't if get my kids were boat. older, like if Tony they're older, Gonzalez's, they're 21 or, that's fine, right? They're all grown. I want to be an adult and like, I'll meet your course. new husband. At this age, my kids are six and four, and my wife brings her boyfriend and he's a big shot. 
you don't even pay for parking. Right. I got it. I'm yes. their dad. Yes. I, I, I'm such a spiteful individual <laughs> that I'm like, I don't need your money, dude. I rather even if it's I rather Jeff Bezos go hat yours. in hand and I'm get money to pay there. for it than show my kids that I need him. I'm with you there. What about the fact that put yourself in Jeff Bezos's shoes now, and the ex is this former NFL player looking. What would you think about that? That's a I good don't one. care. Yeah, yeah, when you got that. Well, much hold money. on. What would you think about that? Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Imagine you're Jeff Bezos. Right. And I'm the Jeff Bezos. Come on, coming on the coming on the boat with his cute little trunks and his abs yeah. and no shirt and tattoos. How would you feel about that? I wouldn't care. I'm Jeff Bezos. Right. Mm. How was your I NFL mean, career? Cool. He a, Here's a couple hundred no, mil. The body Go buy yourself some things. swim trunks. Jeff, Jeff is talking about know. the power okay. difference. Yeah, that's a power it's, difference. It's, it's, it's all a, about. Yeah. He's a former. The reason why I knew the answer was because he's a former athlete. Jeff can own the league. Yeah, but <laughs> you don't think he has any that's a sort great of point. body like. No matter how much money I you have, would. you might look at. I would. Of I'd be looking at, at her nah, beautiful. Cover up your Elon. problem areas look with at hundreds. A of the Elon. resources look are different. Look at Elon before PayPal did so well, and after he is a completely different person with new hair, new body, like a whole new look. So I think there might be ego involved in well, that. Well, that's the point, though. You can buy that. Yeah, you can buy. Okay. It. You can buy Trainers. the body and yeah. the look. Yeah, yeah. Right. you can. Jeff right. Bezos looks like Schwarzenegger. Yeah. I know he's, he's gotten Jack ripped. Too. I agree. I was just saying hypothetically, but I have seen Jeff Bezos's new bod. Okay, the divorce between Kim Zolciak. Just Zos recently, so. The divorce between Kim Zolciak and Croy Bierman is getting nasty. According to TMZ legal docs show that Croy claims Kim is spending a lot of quote unquote time and money online gambling and that her compulsion has devastated the family financially. This comes after Kim accused Croy of smoking pot and has asked a judge to force him to take a drug test. Kim recently posted photos on Instagram, but she still was wearing her wedding ring. The couple announced her divorce last month. They reportedly owe more than $1 million in back taxes to the IRS. What do we? What do you think about this divorce, especially because they do have kids? Yeah. Let's yeah. remember yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. think it, it it makes sense. The rapid. Uh, it just seems like the, there was a sharp decline in money, and I don't think that this is germane just to their relationship. I always think about this when I go out to Vegas or something like that. How many people? And I have a friend that that's in recovery for gambling, has been for 20 years, and he said in every casino there's a room where they take you in where you can sign away your truck, mm -hmm. sign away your house. How many people every single night in Vegas are calling their partner and saying, hey, I know you picked up the phone in our home, but that's not your home anymore. That happens all the time. Gambling is an addiction, but it's not an addiction that you look at where you're like, you can see it where you're like, oh, I can see you physically True. deteriorating. And it's hard. It's almost like a sex addiction, mm -hmm. addiction or Hidden. spending, uh, shopping. It's, it's a problem, but yeah. it's not in the eyes of our society but for some reason. I think that's also the reason why so many people are attached to the story because they're triggered by it. Mm -hmm. Because you have someone who has been in the spotlight for over a decade saying it like it's almost a flex. Like, yeah, I was in the Bahamas and I lost $250,000 gambling. And everything is in excess and there isn't like any checks and balances. The math doesn't math. Like it makes people think that this is a way that you can sustain your life. And yes, you can until a certain point when it all goes away, mm -hmm. you know, you, it doesn't matter how much money you make, it's how much money you're spending. Right. Like, so I think that's the reason why people are constantly like coming for Kim and, you know, what about the for foreclosure and all this stuff? Let me get this crystal clear. I do not wish this on anyone. I would rather have never had anything at all than to have everything and lose it. That's like my biggest that's fear in biggest the world. Fear. You said that. But I think that this is a really great, case, so to speak, to study, because I think a lot of people are ending up in this situation, especially because of reality TV and social media. Great, great conversation, Erica Cobb. All right, we're gonna get a first look, you guys, at the new The Color Purple movie, The Movie, which comes out on December 25th, stars Taraji B. Henson, Haley Bailey, and singer, uh, and S Haley Baker and singer Her, take a look. Dear Seely, we are more than just kings and queens. We are at the center of the universe. Fighting my 
Wow. Oprah, who starred in the original film, directed by Steven Spielberg, is a producer on the new film. She posted a video showing that it's not too early to get ready for the premiere. Watch. Okay, y'all have seen the trailer, and I'm giving you six months to get your outfit together for opening day. All things purple. What you gonna wear? The color purple. Mm -hmm. You think she's in a store? That's her closet. <laughs> I was thinking that. That was her oh, closet? Was I think, yeah, it was I think her it's closet. her closet. And it's organized by different hues, I, and that hue was the lavender purple section. That's just me guessing. No, I, I definitely know thought that, was that was her closet. closet. That, like, I, think it's I, her I closet. thought it was a store. Definitely do. Uh, I think yeah. somebody posted oh. that she was in the shopping in Montecito, maybe? Yeah, it's a particular brand that she was wearing. I thought that I it was know. supposed it to be. I don't be. know, though. Okay. I You're right. The, the the cool thing that Al brought up earlier that I just wanted to say is the idea of making this a musical and a movie. Some people think musical and you think la, 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 jazz hands yeah. and it really I mean that's all you think of like seventy six. That's, that's what it, until you explained it. Yeah, right. Please and like what Al was saying is like this this story is so deeply the Alice Walker story which it started with is so deeply brutal that sometimes singing in that way can sound almost like a cathartic like wail and it can actually move you in a way that you haven't been moved and I think musicals don't always have to be so Oklahoma they can also be really really intimate and I think that's what this will be love that Tori cathartic wail like whale to you I know you thought of the, the so the did mammal. you <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, like, uh, whale I got it after because yeah. I paused I'm like I wanted to make fun of you but then I got it but then I still wanted to make fun of you. <laughs> That's normal. Coming up on DBL, Ashley Perez will be joining us live. We're talking about how her book was one of the most banned books last year. Don't miss it. Our viewers are talking about DBL. Yes! I like that. It leaves me speechless and like blushing. Thank you, yeah. thank you. That's emotional. Do I want to sit there and watch them? Yes, I do. Okay, so we're about to read um, what is the book about speak to a banned book author, and what's interesting about that is, I told you, um, there are places that you can go for any state, and you get into a free digital library, and you can read with a code, and I'll look it up and post it on my Instagram. Am I here? Are you, are you here? Me? I don't know. I, I don't can't. know what you're talking I'm about. talking about um, there's a code that people send out that anyone in this country can go to an online digital library and read any banned books book that is banned. So if you don't have access, let's say, if or if you're in Florida or you're in a place where you're in not allowed to read, there is a code. I'll post it, and it gets you into all of that. And some books you'd be very surprised: Harry Potter for witchery in uh, certain states, uh, and, and uh, wizardry and um, the occult with magic and all that. So it is. Here's another. Uh, yeah. Yeah. For wizards. <laughs> um, wizardry, uh, magicianish. -ish. Hey, I have a joke though. Do you guys want to hear one? Yeah. What is a, a magician? What happens? Who, what does a magician become when they lose their magic? What does a magician become when they lose who their magic? Who does a magician become oh, who does when magician? they lose their magic? Who, who does a magician um, they become? A tiger. They become Ian. Magician. It's just magic without his Ian. Oh, that was your worst one. <laughs> oh, six <laughs> I thought that you didn't was, that know was the quick set tell the rice joke. <laughs> oh, yeah. What, what is it? Okay, here's a rice joke from Mitch Hedberg. Taylor was eating rice, and then I said, Mitch Hedberg always said, rice is always good when you want 2,000 of something. <laughs> Wait, here's my, that's a good, here's my new favorite joke. What's the difference between Dubai and Abu Dhabi? The, uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> people in Dubai don't like the Flintstones, but people in Abu Dhabi do. Abu Dhabi do. <laughs>
There are many issues in our country right now, but one of the biggest ongoing debates is surrounding banned books. Just last week, we discussed the latest on the issue, and from 2021 to 2022, the number of titles increased by almost 35%. Last year alone, over 2,500 books were banned. Joining us now is the author of the ninth most banned book of 2022. So please welcome to the show, author Ashley Perez. Woo! Thank you. <laughs> Hi, thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for being here, Ashley. So let's jump right in. You're the author of Out of the Darkness, which was one of the top, most top 10 banned books of 2022. What is this book about and what inspired you to write this book? Thank you. Um, so Out of Darkness is first and foremost a love story and a story about family and connection in difficult times. It's a historical novel, so it takes place in 1937 in New London, Texas, which is where the New London school explosion killed um, nearly 300 people, most of them kids. Oh. So I take that historical event as a backdrop for a love story between a Mexican-American girl and a Black teen boy in the community and she's a newcomer and he gives her um really is a is a friend to her as she's figuring out how to navigate uh segregated east texas wow Ashley, I'm a huge uh, proponent of reading banned books and standing up and finding them and actually understanding why they have been banned because we're on a slippery slope that makes me think of Germany. I've always said this in, in 1939. To your understanding, why has your particular book been banned? Yeah, so it depends on who you ask, right? Um, and if you ask the book banners, they will say these books like Out of Darkness are sexually explicit. They use the term pornographic, which is um, completely inaccurate to talk about um, sexual content that has a function and right. a work of literature for older readers. Um, but they, you know, what they, what's really interesting and telling, I think, is that they make that assertion but I can tell you as a former high school English teacher and a literature professor, you go into any library, stack up the books with sexual content, and you know what the tallest stack will be about white straight characters. Yeah, right, exactly. Those, those are not the books being banned. Right. So if you ask me, from what I've seen now that my book's been banned or restricted in like 50 school districts, um, over and over the books that are targeted are about black, Latinx, non-white LGBTQ communities. And what we have seen over and over is that these right-wing groups leading the charge have made it their mission really to restrict young people's imagination, to um, narrow what they can uh, engage with and the kinds of lives they imagine being possible. Mm -hmm. And they're especially focused on realities and um, experiences that differ from their own values and priorities. Wow. It's just amazing to me that um, the attack on representation, um, the attack on our, our hypersexuality when it comes to especially children of color, um, just there's so many things, interracial anything. Um, it's, it's crazy, <laughs> yes, it, it's crazy that we're still here. Um, but Out of Darkness was published in 2015. When was it initially banned? 2021. So we're talking about half a decade wow. that it was happily on school library shelves really helps you see that this is not about spontaneous parental concern. In many cases, the parents who are um, saying that they are worried about this have had students who've gone through high school with my book on the shelf. And only now when um, folks in right wing groups are saying Moms for Liberty is saying ban this book. Only now do they have a problem. Right. Wedges. Well, safety in numbers works in mysterious ways. Um, you know, talk us through what happened when you found out and how did you feel about it? What did you actually do? Yeah, well, I so I first heard of the first ban way back in 2021. And I mean, you know, I don't know what's worse, the first one or the 50th one, but it's incredibly painful and personal to me because I became a writer for young adults uh, because the readers I cared most about, my students, could not find the books that represented their experiences, spoke of their histories in ways that resonated with them. And the number one message I heard from my students was they didn't want sugar-coated mm -hmm. things. 
things were often hard right. and painful in certain ways, and they wanted books that honored and respected those realities. So I've been writing the books that my students wanted to read. The thought of another English teacher walking her class or their class into a library, and those books that writers like me have worked so hard to get on the shelves, they're missing. Mm. There's not the book to hand to your young trans student that makes them feel seen and valued. There's not the book about a family that's structured in a different way that lets that student imagine what's possible. It's really it's really um, personal to me when I think about especially students who rely on school libraries, who don't have a credit card to order books online, who can't just hop over to the public library because it might be 15 miles away if you're in a rural community. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Or Ashley, shut down now. Thank you. TBL Nation, you can find more about the lawsuit and join the fight by scanning the QR code below. You can also find out more about Ashley and her book, Out of Darkness, at ashleyperez.com. Ashley, thank you so much for joining us and thank you. best of luck. Thank you, thank Ashley. You. The U.S. continues to inch closer to hitting the debt ceiling and running out of money to pay the bills Congress already approved. If that happens, several Verify viewers wanted to know, will members of Congress still receive their paychecks? Let's verify. Our sources are the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities, the Bipartisan Policy Center, and testimony by then Treasury Secretary Jack Lew. A default will happen if Congress fails to raise the debt limit, an event that has no precedent in American history. Failing to raise the limit would mean the Treasury could no longer borrow money and would only be able to pay bills with whatever cash it has on hand. The coffers won't stay entirely empty. Revenue, like taxes, will continue to come in. But that revenue will only be enough to cover some of the bills, not all of them. So which bills get paid? No one knows. Here's why. First, there is no legal framework or historical precedent that allows the Treasury to pick which bills to pay. They're all due when they're due. In theory, the legal issue could be addressed if Congress passed a new law telling Treasury which bills to prioritize. Such laws have been proposed in the past. And two representatives just proposed a bill to specifically require the Treasury not pay members of Congress if we default. But those laws could be impossible to implement. Here's what then Treasury Secretary Jack Lew told the Senate Finance Committee in 2013 during a previous debate over the debt ceiling. We write roughly 80 million checks a month. The systems are automated to pay because for 224 years, the policy of Congress and every president has been we pay our bills. You cannot go into those systems and easily make them pay some things and not other things. They weren't designed that way because it was never the policy of this government to be in the position that we would have to be in if we couldn't pay all our bills. So will Congress be paid in the event of a default? The answer is inconclusive. With your Verify, I'm Casey Decker. Welcome back. We've got some great products from our friends at Side Deal. Check them out. Steph, what do you have for us today? I'm ready to go. Hi, Tori, and hello, DBL Nation. I am so excited to show you the deals today, and as ever, they are fabulous. fabulous. This is definitely one of my favorites. We've got the two-pack Conair True Glow Facial Brush what? with a UV <gasps> brush sterilizer. What? This deal includes two brush bases, two charging stands, and four facial brushes, clinically proven and dermatologist tested. This skincare essential is two times more effective than using an everyday cleanser alone. Mm. Con Air is a worldwide industry leader and we are so excited to offer this innovative product from a powerhouse brand at more than 80% off for two. Woo! So normally these are $80 each, <laughs> but we've got two Tory for $29.99, so that's saving up to 81%. I was just thinking of who I would buy all this for, you know what I'm saying? Get one for yourself and then like buy a gazillion for all your girlfriends or guy friends. This is so Absolutely. smart. Absolutely. 
absolutely. And you know, if you wear a lot of makeup or if you're very oily, that this is going to really ensure that your face gets really clean and it's prevents breakout. So especially it's really for summer, good. you know what I mean? It's coming up that sweat and stuff. This exactly. is great. Exactly. Upgrade your skin products. A absolutely. And Tori, whilst we're upgrading the skin products, what about upgrading at home too? Yes, please. Our next product is the Refurbish Shark Pro Cordless Vacuum with self-cleaning power fins brush roll. So this deal includes one certified renewed vacuum with accessories. So you'll get the powerful shark suction and advanced cleaning technology with this refurbished cordless vacuum. So why not clean your home with one of the most trusted names in household appliances? Hmm. Well, this is your chance to get an industry leading brand at a fraction of the cost. So normally this is $400 new. Oh my word. I know, Tori, but we've got this refurbished one for $129.99. That's saving everyone 68%. Spring cleaning, y'all. Spring cleaning. I love it. And it get looks through so that house. as well. Get ready for summer. It is such a good way. Open those windows and get that dust out. There you go, Tori. I love that. Now, what about this? We've got the two pack pitch and trek inflatable travel and camping pillow. Oh. So this deal includes two pillows that are adjustable to your comfort level and this is perfect for camping or maybe when you're on the airplane right. or for lounging in the park and this lightweight pillow packs down to the size of a little tiny soda can oh. and it blows up in just three breaths so very very easy. Oh. Normally they're at $18 each. That's not even that bad. But we've got a two pack for $10 for So that's saving up to 72%. You know what I'm thinking, Steph? Yeah. Hammock time. Exactly. That's right. It is hammock time. Get all cozy, looking cute in your garden. And you've got a beautiful garden. Thank I think you should you. take one of these. Right? I think that's fantastic. That's beautiful. And then last but not least today, we've got the Brio IC3S Electronic Temple and Eye Massager with Heat. Oh, whoa. So this deal includes one electronic temple and eye massager with heat. This massager targets acupuncture points around the eyes, eyebrows, and temples with air pressure, massage, vibration, and heat. Wow. And for an even more relaxing experience, it also has four soothing sounds. So normally this is $80, Ooh. but we've got it for $39.99, so that's saving up to 50%. Half off. Anyone with migraines, headaches, or my oh, dad reacts yeah. to eye, um, the sunlight poorly, mm -hmm. this could really be relaxing for them. Or even if you're just stressed out, this is a really good deal. Oh, sometimes I get really bad insomnia. I cannot sleep. And so this might be a really nice way of just like zoning out, totally. relaxing, it's almost like taking a minute. Sensory deprivation. Yeah, exactly. I love that. Head on over to SideDeal.com come to snag these amazing deals at the lowest prices or you can even visit sidedeal.com on your smartphone it's easy thank you so much Steph these are great we'll be right back at chef Tim Ma's